Hello everybody, I'm Nick and today I'm going to talk about why I don't use the else keyword whenever I'm programming. Now a bit of a disclaimer, the main languages I use when I'm programming, I mean in this channel is C sharp, but on, at my own time I'm using Java and Kotlin as well. Um, in Kotlin you have to use it for certain operations and I will explain when I'm using it uh, in C sharp as well. But in general I don't actually use it. And the reason why I'm making this video to begin with is because I brought it up in one of the comments and the people of the community wanted me uh, to talk about it in detail and I'm gonna do that in this video uh, by no means am I recommending that you should stop using it or that if you're using it you're doing something wrong this is just my perspective about why uh, I think for years now I haven't really been using it and in fact if you get access to the sources for the videos I'm making in two years I've never used it outside of um, any templates or any JS uh, libraries that I've used. So yeah, if you think that this is an interesting topic, let's dive into the code and talk about why I'm not using the else keyword anymore. Now, first I wanna talk about something else before we look into any code. Um, around three years back, uh, a colleague of mine brought up something called object calisthenics. And it is a, a rule set of nine different rules written by uh, Jeff Bay as part of his uh, the uh, ThoughtWorks anthology book. Now, whenever I deal with these types of rules for clean code, I'm very skeptic and I approach them very carefully because, yeah, there are nine rules there, but it doesn't mean I have to use them if I don't agree with them. Um, it turns out that many of them are applicable and with some of them I don't agree. You can see them in your screen right now. Um, and if you actually want an object calisthenics dedicated video, uh, I can make one if you ask for it in the comments down below but the second one is don't use the else keyword and the first time I heard them like wait a second well first I'm not really using it that much but also why shouldn't I use it right why are you so blatant don't use it and I had this discussion with my colleague and we did a refactoring exercise and it turns out that it's not that you should remove it, it's that you don't really have a need to use it in the first place. Um, this is not really true when it comes down to Razor or Blazor and you're doing inline uh, you know, HTML and C Sharp, there you have to use it. But if you're just doing regular code in your monolithic or microservice application, um, there is really no need, at least for the code that I'm writing, to use it. And for that video, I'm gonna look at an example of course, it's a simple example, but I hope that it demonstrates in a smaller picture what the bigger uh, reason is. And hopefully uh, we can see how we can make the code better by not using it and whether it's even worth uh, doing so. So let me just close this and go to the program.cs. And what I have here is just a simple application that uh, creates a new instance of a bartender um, and it's accepting uh, an input and an output uh, mechanism in this scenario i'm using the console to accept input from uh, the console and write to the console and then i'm constantly asking for a drink in a loop if i am to run this let me just show you how this uh, looks like so the question is what do you want to drink beer or juice i will say juice and it goes here you go fresh and nice juice and then the question is asked to me again what do you want i want beer so i'm gonna say beer and it goes no not so fast cowboy how old are you and i can say 16 and then it goes sorry but you're not old enough to drink at least in the uk uh and if i do it again and say beer and i say 18 or more here you go you're called beer so this is the program that we're gonna be looking at and the code we're gonna be uh effectively refactoring so let's go in that bartender class and see what's what's here so what we have at the top is a function and action uh, related to how we're dealing with input and output and uh, we're injecting that because i don't want to restrict this code to a single uh, you know, console you might want to use a logger you might want to use some other input mechanism and then i have a list uh, of logical flow where you ask for the drink you say okay give me the input let me know what you want and then i say if it's beer do this if it's juice do this else sorry we don't do this drink oh yeah one of the things i didn't show is that if i put something that is not part of um, the recipe book then it will go to the last else state now Right off the get-go, you can see that we have three uses of the else keyword. First, for the um, age input, so if it's a valid integer for the age, uh, and it's then whether it's more than 18, and last to handle the edge case of we don't serve that drink. Now, 
there are several things that are wrong with this uh, with this method outside of the else keyword. For example, to me, what rings a bell is that this class is violating uh, open close uh, principle from the solid principles because every time I want to add a new drink, I have to go else if and say whether that equals the drink and add the logic here. We can make this better, but I won't start by doing that. I will start by something else. If we go back to the object calisthenics, one of the other rules I tend to follow is the one only one level of intendation per method. Uh, what does that mean? Well, only, only one level of intendation means that you start here when you start writing your code. This is your level of intendation and you go all the way to here, but you don't have any more nesting in your methods. Obviously, that's not always achievable, but in scenarios like this, it is. You could say something like you're going to grab this whole piece of code and you can say uh, extract method. I'm going to use the extract method functionality and I'm going to say serve uh, beer. And, or handle beer serving and I can move that code there then I can also say here serve juice and last but not least I will say uh, extract method and available drink and in that way now you can see that the, the method the initial method is way more readable and again readable is a very subjective thing and it's subjective to the eye of the beholder but the way I look at it, it's way easier to see how the code flow goes and what my application is doing. For example, I'm getting the input, um, the drink name is here. I check whether it's a beer and I'm calling the serve beer method. And if I want to see what this uh, serve beer method is doing, I just go to it and I read it completely separate from the main flow, um, which to me is clearer. Now, that being said, here we're still violating this um, only one level of intendation uh, rule and we can fix that as well by simply splitting that part out so say um, handle invalid age or for beer we could say that and then I can also say handle uh, beer age check and then I separated those I am um, now not violating that single rule of intendation and my extracted methods also don't violate that so by splitting those outside my code is now not violating the first rule which is you'll see how it's linked to the second rule um, also you might be screaming in your head now that hey this if else should be switched to a switch and you're right i'll go ahead and i'm gonna switch this if else if else statement to a switch and now we don't have the else keyword, right? I didn't explicitly remove the else keyword here. I just changed my if else, if else, or else if um, to a different type of check. So I honored the second rule, but I didn't really do it to honor the second rule. I did because it makes more sense here to actually use a switch. So what about the other ones, right? So um, unavailable drink and serve juice, they don't really uh, do much, but the uh, serve beer, actually does something you have the if the age is not possible then you handle invalid age else you handle uh, beer age check now is there any point in having this extra nesting with this else bit here because the way i see it i could return here because the code is not meant to go any further if uh in this specific method and I can just remove the redundant else. And now I'm not using the else keyword. I'm returning early. Uh, not that returning early is the reason why I removed it, but I removed the nesting and I don't have to follow that logic anymore. It's just not there. So by returning in the if statement, if returning is appropriate after I'm splitting it, it makes more sense to not actually have the else keyword there. And my code looks a bit less bloated. Uh, and I will do the same with the beer check. Obviously, a writer will say you should change this into a ternary. Uh, it's called ternary? I think it's called ternary check, but it, it doesn't look nice. I generally, in calls like this, I would also extract this to something like a local function that is, um, is over the legal limit and maybe use that, then that would also cause nesting in the method, so I might extract it outside. For now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And what we're going to say is, if it's more, 
then return. If not, remove the else. And that way we just eliminated any use of the else keyword in that piece of code. This is a small, like micro size of uh, the use case. But if you think about it, usually outside of Razor templates and Blazor, it's these sort of things where you would use the else keyword. If you're doing something like very complicated algorithms, uh, or if you're following a single exit point uh, approach, which I don't really recommend, but if you're doing that, then you have to use the else keyword. Uh, but in code that I'm writing in Kotlin, Java, and uh, C Sharp, I very much follow that approach because I just don't need to use it. I don't have something against it. It's just something that I don't have to use. If you stayed until here, you've seen everything I want to talk about on the else keyword, but I think there is value in showing how you would refactor this code further because currently it's still violating uh, the open close principle. For example, if you want to add a new drink to be supported, you would have to create a new case and you would say, I don't know, some cocktail, maybe. Cocktail? That's very generic. Whatever. The main idea is that you have to come to this method and edit this method. So the edit is open for modification while it should be open for extension and closed for modification. So for the rest of the video, I'm gonna address that. If that's all you want to see until now, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. So how can we optimize this code? Now, there's a few ways how you can you can do this but i'm gonna go with a very simple way that doesn't require me to use any other library like something like mediator some people say that you can fix the else keyword or not use it by using the uh, state pattern and i agree but that's not really what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna go with a more um hands-off approach uh, on the problem what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make a new class and i'm gonna name this class a recipe book so every bar, I'm assuming, has some sort of recipe book where people know how to make those drinks. Uh, you don't really need to know how to make beer or juice, but for the purpose of this video, like imagine those are cocktails. Um, and I want all this to be automated, so to just have a single ask for drink method and then automatically pick up any potential uh, drinks that are available. So what I'm going to do in that bartender is I'm going to say private read only uh, recipe book. Uh, recipe book equals new. I could inject that as well from the constructor. Um, I'm not going to do it, but you could because now we're just um, binding the dependency on the recipe book. So if you're using a database to get the recipes, uh, you really want to be injecting it so you can mock it and test it. But I just want to keep this simple. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the recipe book and I'm going to create a private um, read only, uh, let's say, dictionary. How about that? Yeah, let's say dictionary. And in that dictionary, I'm going to have a string, which is a key. And then the action will be just an action. And I'm going to name that recipes. And I'm going to have a constructor. And in that constructor, I'm going to have recipes dot. Uh, actually, I'm going to initialize it. And I'm going to have my recipes here. For example, I would have the beer recipe and then the way to make it. This is a lambda. I will uh, populate this in a second. And then the juice. So same thing, juice. Uh, I think that I don't have to inject anything here, most likely. Maybe I can actually inject, to simplify this, I can inject the, the input and output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject those from the constructor, uh, initialize field from constructor for both of these. And then I have the methods. And now I'm going to take all of that outside of the recipe book, of the bartender, sorry. Um, and what I'm going to say instead is I'm going to use the serve juice method here and the serve beer method here. And now every time I want to add a different way, a different drink, all I have to do is add the name of the drink and the method in this recipe book, and then my bartender will know how to make it. 
Obviously, I have to edit this code as well to make this work. So I'm going to add a couple of methods in my recipe book. But these methods are private and they're not leaking outside of my uh, recipe book. So what I'm going to say is public list. Uh, actually, I can make this an enumerable. I enumerable of string and say get available drinks or drink names. Yep. And I can say return uh, recipes dot keys. And now I can return the keys in a in a list or an enumerable. And the reason why I'm doing this is because let me just um, initialize this recipe book in here instead equals new recipe book. Ah, you know what? I should really inject it. Yeah, whatever. Let's inject it. Um, but you go here and I'm going to inject you in a second. And what I'm going to do, uh, because I don't want to edit this list every single time, is I'm going to use string interpolation and I'm going to say um, recipe book dot get available drinks. And in order to automatically build this comma separated list of available drinks, I'm going to say string dot join comma space and then the enumerable. And now when I run this, this will pick it up automatically from whatever is available. And the other thing I want to do is I want to get the recipe from the recipe book. So recipe book dot um, get recipe. And I'm going to give it the drink name for me to get the recipe. And ultimately what I want to do is I'm going to say, uh, I'm, I'm just going to invoke the recipe. Uh, and this should just work. So if I remove all of this code, I'm going to now implement this get recipe uh, method. Let me move it at the top. So we pick that up and we put it here. And actually that I'm thinking about it, we don't even need this uh, get recipe method because what we can do is we can have the bartender uh, checking for whether the drink is available. So if recipe book dot get available drinks dot does not contain the drink name, then we just say output provider. Sorry, I don't know how to make this one. Not exclamation mark. And then we just return. If they do know, then we need to get the recipe back to do it. So could I do it with recipe book dot? Um, you know what? I do need the a get recipe. I don't really need a get recipe. I need the uh, make drink method. So make drink. And I'm going to say drink here. And really that's it. So I'm going to create the method. I'm going to move it at the top. I'm going to move it here. And this is the drink name. And what I really want to do is I want to get the drink from the recipe. So drink name. And I'm going to just invoke that. And now all I need to change here is that this bartender also needs uh, the recipe book, which also needs the same uh, parameters. And you go here. Here you go. And now my code is there. And if I run it again, unless I really, so as you can see, this is automatically dynamically picked up by the, the, the dictionary we had. And if I do beer, not so fast, cowboy, how old are you? 10. Sorry, but we're not making that uh, because you're young. Uh, juice, here you go. This is a juice, something random. Sorry, I don't know how to make this one. So we have the exact same behavior, but now if I want to add a drink, and what drink should I add? In fact, this is not even needed, this uh, unavailable drink. So I'm going to delete that. And if I want to add an extra drink, all I need to do is add the method for the drink. So let's say I want to add a, a private void uh, serve, what's like old fashioned, which is a cocktail. Um, here you go. Quite old school. There it is. And if I change this to uh, old fashioned, I'm going to just say serve old fashioned. And that's it. Now, all I have to do is run the code. I didn't modify any existing method. I just added one and I added the thing in a dictionary. If you want to go over the top with this, you could actually just 
um, use an, um, an attribute and put the name here on the method and then dynamically load it up with reflection and startup. Or you could use something like mediator if you really want to go over the top. Or you could split those methods to separate drink handlers. But my main point, going back to the original point, which is why I'm not using the else keyword, is because I really don't need to. I'm following a few rules that are more like rules in my mind than I'm thinking and doing them. Um, that make me not have to use it. Now, I understand that this might not be applicable everywhere, but if you compare the code where we started and the code where we are now, I think it's way more clean, way clearer, again, very subjective, um, but it works for me, so it might work for some of you. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.